So welcome. In this video, we're looking at how to properly install and how to use the framework ITMMF. So most people, what they've done is they've gone and then just google.com and then just the, uh, did the GitHub install. Do a git clone of this and that's it. But lo and behold, there actually are instructions. Wikipedia, installation, it is not as simple as just doing a git clone and that's it. If you do a git clone and you go to use it, for the most part it works. But things like injecting a, or using file pwn, uh, doesn't quite work if you do not follow these instructions. So a few things that I'm going to be doing is all of these these items right here. I'm installing the uh, the virtual environment wrapper. I am not doing these steps. I am getting a git clone hub from it. I'm also doing these options right here. And that's it. Following those instructions, I have got this part to function. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get logged in. So this copy of Kali is the pre-setup uh, VM. Again, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that app get update. I want to make sure that my Kali is fully updated and my app uh, fully upgraded as well. It is taking its sweet ass time this time around. Okay, that took longer, way longer than normal. I'm going to do an upgrade and we are good to go in that regard. So I'll be doing an app git install. Again, I'm following the instructions. All I'm doing is this entire string of app git. I got all of this from the GitHub for the installation process of this tool. I'm going to let all of it download. So this takes about 10 minutes, so I'm going to pause. So this will be all be downloaded. All right, so I had a few really slowdowns, but yes. If you get any errors returning any of this, what I've had to do is I restarted my Kali and then I made sure I was using proper DNS. Uh, I'm doing this as a VM, so I was just using my VM's uh, auto default DNS, but yeah, this whole waiting for header, normally this takes seconds. So this taking a while is kind of weird. So I updated my DNS to Google's DNS 8888 and now it started rolling. So this process can take a few minutes. So, all right, so after it's installed, I'm gonna go ahead again, I'm gonna do an update. And I'm gonna do an upgrade. I just wanna make sure that everything that we're doing with these tools are up to date and upgraded. Okay, so once I've done that, once I've had those tools installed, I'm gonna do a few more things. I'm gonna go ahead and pipe install a virtual environment wrapper. I'm going to do a pipe install upgrade pipe. I'm going to go ahead and do my git clone now. I've noticed that if you do not prep all of the items, all of the prereqs, then it doesn't really like it. Once it's done doing that, I'm going to change directory to my directory. I'm going to get all the submodules and update all the submodules. A 
it will double check, especially the DB factory. Those are big ones. The last command, I'm going to pipe install recursively the requirement.txt. So what does that mean? It's going to go in here, look at the requirement.txt, and it is going to download all of those. And again, once that's done, I will do another app get update and app get, uh, get upgrade. So again, we can make sure that we have the most current things for everything. I want to open up two more additional windows. So in my second window, app get update. For whatever reason, my internet is just running super slow today. Upgrade, all right. So we are currently up, uh, up to date with everything. On one window, I actually want to get MSF console open. MSF console. We want to load MSG RPC. We want to take note of the message RPC password. We're going to go up to our MTI MITMF, go to our config folder, go to the MITMF.conf file, and in that exploit, we're going to be replacing the RPC password. While we're here, I'm going to actually I'm going to search. I want to search for specifically. File pwn, because this is what's going to be injecting our items. I'm going to be doing this off of a Windows Intel x86. I'm going to be putting my L host and L port. Here, I actually want to set it to my Kali machine. If you're not sure, let's go into an if config. I'm setting it to my Kali machine's IP address. And I'm changing, I'm setting it to a port that I want. Saving it, and that's it. So, back in our MSF console window, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to set up a exploit. So use exploit. We're going to be doing a multi-handler. Multi-handler. We're going to be setting a payload. We are using a Windows payload. There's going to be a interpreter shell. Reverse TCP. We are setting our L host. Again, set this to our Kali machine. Set the L port. It's the same port you set in the config file. Go and run the exploit. It should set up the handler. All right, so once the handler is set up, it's ready to go. We have to do one last step before our attack really gets underway. We are looking at getting rid of that window. We only need this one. So we are already in the MI. TMF folder, so ls, we want to run this guy. So python mitmf.py. If we run it, we're going to see that we're missing a few arguments. 
and it'll list all the arguments. For what, what we are doing is we are going to be looking at a simple HTTP type attack where we're going to be injecting uh, our exploit into any executable that's downloaded through HTTP. We are not doing HTTPS in this video. So this is only working for HTTP. So first thing is double dash, we're going to spoof double dash ARP hyphen I for our interface. We're doing this based off of this interface. All right, sorry about that. We're doing this on Ethernet zero. We are setting the gateway 192.168.246.2 double dash for our target. We are targeting specifically a Windows 7 machine. I happen to already know the IP address. Last thing is we are using file pwn on it, hitting enter. All right. There may be a few little returns. This address family is already in use. That should be fine. So this is a new one for me. Normally I don't get any of that, but that's okay. Let's see if it works. What I have already is on another screen, I have Windows. And all I'm doing is I'm opening up Internet Explorer on it. And you're starting to see the flow of information. On my Windows 7 machine, I'm going to Google. We'll just kind of yep, there you go. That way we can see side by side. I'm going to download Putty. Go to Putty. I want to download it. I want to download Putty.exe. Notice it's taken a while. Ah, see, here is where we actually get to see if the file was being patched or not. What it did was, while I was trying to save it, it was actually downloading it and patching it with the exploit. So when I actually go to save this, and I go to run it, The second I run it, bam, I get my interpreter session. That is a simple man in the middle attack where we are injecting a payload into a download. This has taken me forever to do. The install instructions are extremely important because I have followed these from 20 other websites and none of them got me this far. I can never get a interpreter, interpreter session to open but with the steps that I provided, I was able to, which you just see me do. Any questions, any issues, please let me know. Again, this is man in the middle framework, setup and basic configuration and a basic exploit.